how how is a cell sort of going through its its um its motions if the membrane isn't um isn't embedded with all of these pumps and uh integral membrane proteins that you know transfer things uh these minerals in and out where's the energy coming from good question um uh, actually great question where is the energy coming from and um uh, uh uh, I'm trying to think of where to start because I, I suspect that people who are watching um, are not familiar with with the developments that came after Gilbert Ling that have come from our lab, which is really the subject of the fourth phase of water um, mm -hmm. uh, and beyond. Um, and 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 so in order to in order to explain where the energy comes from, I need to step back a few steps and say a few words about about what Gilbert Ling called structured water and what we call fourth phase of water or exclusion zone, EZ, you say EZ, I think, it doesn't work, it's not, it's easy to remember. Uh, so I, I need to step back because it comes from, I think, a lot of it, uh, how much I'm not sure it come, comes from there. And, and so, so let, me, let me just step back and if I go off track, please, please, if I get derailed, please derail me, uh, because I do have a tendency to do that. Okay, so we found uh, that when water meets, uh, if, you, if you take a container of water and you put a blob of material in the water, let's say a gel, uh, something like ordinary gel in dessert, for example, uh, but, and you put it in, uh, what happens is that, is that the water molecules uh, 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 that are adjacent to the surface of the gel, um, the first molecular layer, when it meets the surface of the gel, it undergoes a radical transformation uh, from individual water molecules that are bouncing around a fierce number of times each femtosecond. Um, uh, um, uh, and what happens is that they undergo a transition and become an ordered array, a single molecular layer of, of molecules. And that array is actually hexagonal. If you, <coughs> if you were to look at this sheet of water that forms from this direction, you, you'd see a honeycomb, um, uh, basically tiny little hexagons lined up with one another, very well ordered. And then what happens is this ordered array of hexagons uh, it serves as the nucleation site for the next layer of uh, water forming hexagons in the next and in the next. So what happens is that these, these layers build one by one starting at the surface and creating uh, this special different kind of water which we refer to as the fourth phase water or we sometimes refer to it as, as I said, exclusion zone because as it builds, it's a pure crystal and crystals, as they build, they, they push out everything else that had originally been in the water because uh, otherwise it wouldn't be pure. It's like a glacial moraine, at the bottom of the glacier, you find all the junk that's been pushed out as the ice forms. And this is not so different from that. It's not ice, but it behaves in, in, in somewhat, somewhat the same way. The consistency is more like, as it, as it gel-like or highly viscous, maybe, something like honey. So, so anyway, so you, you, you've got this layer that grows. And, um, and it turns out, if you look at the structure of this, um, it's not H2O anymore. It's actually H3O2, if you count the number of hydrogens and oxygens that are in it. And it turns out, through measurements, uh, this is not conjecture, we actually measured, we found that typically, this zone, exclusion zone, easy fourth phase, has negative charge. And the region beyond has equal and opposite charge, positive charge. So you have something that's like a battery, negative charge uh, in first region, in the easy region, fourth phase region, and positive charge, that's a battery. Now, uh, batteries contain energy. Um, in order to build this battery to start with, I, 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 I need to mention, you need to put energy in, just like your cell phone. If you forget to plug it in at night, battery is not going to be charged. Your phone won't work. 
I don't have to worry about that because I have no cell phone, so <laughs> it's no problem for me, but it's a problem for you. And I'm sure you forget. So you need energy. You need energy to do two things. First is to separate the charge as the easy builds. And secondly, to create order. Creating order from chaos always requires energy. So you're putting energy in. And we found out uh, through experimentation, actually through serendipity to start with, it was a, it was a young undergraduate student who, who discovered this, that uh, the energy for doing all these wonderful things comes from light. And especially from infrared light. And that is, you know, light whose wavelength is just beyond red, red being the longest wavelength in the visible spectrum. But of course, there's light that goes beyond the visible and, that, and it's infrared light, which, which is roughly not exactly equivalent to heat. Uh, so like if you're, if you've got the toaster going on, you can see the red coils, uh, or orange coils glowing and you say, oh yeah, it's, it's hot and it's generating infrared, but infrared is all around all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, so, and so infrared is the energy that's used um, to create this separation of charge to give you this battery-like uh, effect. Now, the key point is you've got this water inside your body. Your cells are absolutely filled with, with um, easy water. That is the kind of water that fills your cells. And, you know, we discovered that through various pieces uh, of experimentation and work work by others and 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 so um, you, you you've got you your cells are negatively charged and that negative charge comes from the fact that your cells are filled with easy water which has negative charge it's a very simple uh, kind of uh, relationship and uh, you know but your listeners might not know that the usual explanation for that does have to do with with the pumps and, and the channels, um, the putative pumps and channels in the membrane. I say putative because uh, it's not so clear that they really do what they're supposed to be doing. It's not just the pumps, um, but it's the channels as, as well. And so if that is not the reason why the cell has net negative charge, then there must be another reason. And the simplest reason is, you know, it's, it's almost like, kindergarten uh, sort of reasoning uh, that the cell is filled with easy water. Easy water has negative charge and therefore the cell is negative. Uh, so that negative charge carries energy. You imagine, imagine a, a cell and it's filled with all those negative charges and they repel each other. They want to get away from each other. And, uh, and that the, the tendency to want to move away is potential energy, the potential potential to do work. Or looking at it another way, you've got negative charge inside, positive charge outside. It's kind of like a battery and that battery is capable of doing work. So it's a long roundabout way of saying, uh, answering your question. And your question was, where does the energy come from uh, to run you, your, your body and, and my body? And uh, at least some of it, some of it, I believe comes from electrical energy, which comes from the easy or fourth phase water. And, and this is elaborated uh, in, in the other book that you mentioned called The Fourth Phase of Water, which seems to have become rather popular. Uh, uh, so, so, so to answer the question, but if you read a, if you read a standard um, uh, textbook on cell biology, you'll read something completely different from that. And, it will tell you that uh, it all comes from the high energy bond contained within ATP, um, adenosine triphosphate. And so uh, this high energy bond in theory is, is used to power essentially everything our body does. There's one little problem uh, with that that remains unresolved. And it's one that Gilbert Ling talks about, talked about in his various books. And I think his website still exists, uh, gilbertling.org. I hope it still exists. I hope that somebody is, is running it. Um, and he talks about an interesting observation. So it was many years ago, maybe I think 70 years ago, that some chemists discovered that ATP, adenosine triphosphate, that one of those phosphates has a so-called high energy bond. 
so that's chemical energy. And that chemical energy is then theorized to be used in all different ways to run, to run the machines of our body, basically. You need energy, and that's where it comes from. Uh, uh, and, 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 and that became popular very quickly, that idea, because prior to that, there was no understanding of where we get our energy. And so the idea that we get our energy from ATP uh, is, was a popular one. However, Gilbert points out that one year later, some physical chemists wrote a paper, an extensive paper, suggesting that that's wrong. These guys made a mistake, a simple arithmetic error. There is no high energy bond in ATP. Um, and uh, Gilbert Ling proposed a different role for ATP, which we didn't go into at the moment. It's tangential from your, of your question. So, so the question remains unresolved. It unresolved in my mind and unresolved in, in perhaps the minds of some others because apparently nobody has taken up that, that objection. Nobody has said, yeah, I read the original paper and I read the objection and the guys who objected are right or the guys are wrong because they did X, Y, Z. It remains, it remains a question. Um, and almost nobody is willing to address the question because the idea that ATP is responsible for all the energy in our cells and our body, it's sacred. It's become absolutely sacred. And so when it's sacred, it's not easy to question uh, concepts that have become sacred that are in literature and are accepted by generations of people. But it's not clear whether it's right or whether it's not right. And it needs to be addressed, seriously addressed, by somebody who has the capability of doing it. And at the same time, I would like to suggest that if it turns out that ATP does not contain that energy, or maybe contains some energy, but not all that much, there is this other source of energy that I've been talking about, and, and that is the electrical energy that comes from water. Um, it could represent a small fraction of the energy that we use, a modest fraction, a large fraction, or even conceivably all. I wouldn't go that far because we don't have the evidence for that, but at least so. 